Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Ask the Mayor. I'm your host, Bria Jones, joining you now from inside the Flint Development Center with Flint Mayor Sheldon Neely. Now, right now we're inside one of the water testing labs here. Talk to me about the impact and the importance of the work that's going on behind us. Well, you know, this is a great place. This is right in the middle of the community, right down the ML King Boulevard Avenue, right down uh, through the center of Genesee County. And this is a third party independent testing lab. It's the McKenzie Croom. Uh, testing lab here and this is uh, one of the sites that we have young people learning there's the skills of, of how to work a lab and also to reestablish a level of trust inside of our community as it relates to our water quality inside the city of Flint this is uh, the Flint Development Center now but it was formerly the Bunch Elementary School and this is actually the, the elementary school in which I attended as a long a, as time ago uh, yes, a very long time ago, but my mother still lives about two blocks away from this site here, but we wanted to make sure people had access to a third-party independent testing lab because restoring confidence uh, in the minds of our public is, is very important, and to have an independent lab right in the community is very important. And this community lab has been open for six months. Yes. Um, just residents, is it free? Is it available? And how the people who are watching may want to get their water tested, how can they do so? Right. The city of Flint is still testing water and water quality as it relates to our EGLE, which is our environmental protection agencies in the state of Michigan, and also EPA, which is the federal environmental protection agencies. We still have to qualify and test on a city level. And for get your testing done there, you can dial 410 uh, 2020 for the city of Flint to come out and give you a kit to test. But if you want the third independent party testing, the independent uh, testing crew here with these fine young scholars, you can call 422-9833 to get a kit and then you can also test your water. So you can you know, get a level of understanding of where your water quality is and get a better sense of uh, a confidence uh, you know, once the water quality continues to build and get better and better. Now, April is the month that many recognize as the anniversary of the Flint water crisis when the city's water source switched over to the Flint River. Now, as we approach that seven year mark, just reflecting and looking back, I'm um, just kind of what are your thoughts as we approach that date? We've made uh, uh, some great strides, you know, more than probably $2 billion of resources have been put to the effort of restoring water quality inside the city of Flint and also the infrastructural uh, pieces put together. Uh, right now, it's a little distracting and a little disturbing that right now, as we, we, as we get ready to complete, we have less than 500 structures to check that now has been placed on hold because we have no project manager because the Flint City Council has halted the money uh, for this last phase of, of completion. We still have a soft surface repair to still can, to be completed. This is the season. People want to have their yards beautiful and these type of things, and we are, we're right there. And so these delays... Uh, can be a, contributed to many different things, petty politics, divisiveness between uh, the co-equal branches of government, but people should not be left to suffer. We have come far, uh, you know, and we need to complete this project. Seven years is far too long for any community to undergo what the city of Flint has, and we need to complete this project to make sure people are not fearful of what's coming out of their taps. We need to complete the lead line replacements in the city of Flint, and so we need this to be done. And so I would ask the viewers to petition their city council people and say, hey, let's continue to move forward. Now, as you mentioned, this is construction season. And if the city council doesn't act fast and make a decision when it comes to the pipe replacement program, what's at stake and at what point will the city step in to take action? Well, the health and welfare of those individuals that still have the, the service lines to their homes is very critical. The world has watched this. Many high-minded dollars have went to the effort of this uh, outside of taxpayer dollars. So if they don't do it, you know, the, the, the residents themselves have the obligation to be able to petition their council people and to remove those obstructionists out of the way because we know uh, it should be people over politics. And, and we need to move forward with this and then continue to uh, strive to get this job done. Now, switching gears, another major issue that we're facing, not only in Flint, but all over the country, we're seeing a increase in coronavirus cases. Now, when it comes to this upswing here in Genesee County and in Flint, um, how is your administration just kind of handling the uptick in COVID cases? Well, we know the moratorium for water shutoffs has been lifted by the state, but the city of Flint, we will not disconnect uh, users to the water system. We will not take away that tool, uh, that fighting tool that people have against this deadly virus. Of, of washing their hands and making sure they have sanitary environments, we won't take that away from them. But however, we will go after those habitual commercial non-payers. 
Uh, when I say habitual commercial non-payers, we've seen apartment complexes that has been recently in the news that owes the city probably more than a million dollars of past utility costs. We will be seeking those uh, dollars to be able to put back into our system to support the infrastructure of water delivery in our community. And so we have a big task in front of us. Yeah, a big task and call me what a large amount of money as well, the $99 million in COVID relief funding that will be coming to the city of Flint, which is great news for us um, and just all of the different things that could potentially happen with that funding when it comes to looking at COVID as well as the water crisis uh, that people are still dealing with. Where are we seeing that funding going or where would you like to see that money allocated right. towards? But, but first, the viewers have to say, can you say game changer? This is transformational for our communities, right? And uh, in the Genesee County area and the greater Flint area, you know, $77 million is going to the county. $114 million is going to the Flint Community Schools, accompanied with $99 million to the city of Flint. With our philanthropic partners and our friends and residents alike, this is transformational for our community. And if we stick together in a, in a, with a positive mindset on a direction to be able to enhance our community and also the futures of our children, we can make a game-changing move in this community. New infrastructure, new economic development opportunities, we talk about public safety, we talk about health quality, uh, we, we talk about all these areas that we're going to be having focus circles and having dialogues with uh, members of our community and stakeholders uh, to make sure this money gets to its attended target. Uh, far too often many dollars were misplaced uh, through this whole uh, situation of a water crisis. These dollars that's going to be coming to the city of Flint will not be misplaced, but they will hit their target to make sure that we have an effectuated change improving the quality of life for residents inside the city. These dollars will be accounted for uh, and we will be good stewards of these dollars, uh, unlike what we've seen uh, in the re recent past, forgive the oxymoron, but, uh, but th these dollars will go to the benefit of residents in this community. You know, and as we know, as you just mentioned, when it comes to trust in government and local officials in Flint, it's just not there for so many people, just given the history of everything that's transpired here. How do you plan to make people feel comfortable with how this administration will be allocating those funds? Well, it's a transparency, right? If people can see through the window and see actually what's going on, uh, that becomes a level of trust that's, that's uh, as a byproduct of that, being able to see what's going on. And also some of the things that we've done, the city council and the mayor's office has recently put forth a resolution asking the judge in a lawsuit settlement for a level of transparency, ask for a special master to be uh, given so we can look at the itemization of what uh, charges are going to be uh, uh, accrued for those lawyers, the plaintiff's lawyers, and where those dollars are going. I think it's very important that residents know exactly who got paid, who's getting paid, and get a, a, a counting of those dollars, you know, in an itemized type of fashion. Because when we talk about what was requested in the form of $200 million from a sum of $641 million, I think people deserve to know uh, where these dollars are, are going. And I know it's a lot of dialogue around uh, the dollars, but definitely when we have dollars, sometimes you have um, nefarious intent and some try to pick the pockets of the poor and we need to stop that now. And that's what this current administration is doing. And when it comes to residents having an insight, a lot of people talk on social media, um, but will they have a chance to talk with you and other members of the administration about what they would like to see the money go towards? I know city council, they're having budget hearings this week. Um, are there any opportunities for residents to chime in other than maybe public comments? Yep, absolutely. We, we invite those type of things uh, outside of any interruptions, right? Because people's, the will of the people has to be honored right outside of, of the dysfunctional system in which they're become accustomed to watching inside of city of flint uh, we need to make sure that we lift uh, the intellect of our whole community as it relates to where these dollars are going and how they should be used and we are, are going to be uh, having focus circles inviting people to provide their, their comments now we ask people to be very respectful and to be very mindful of what we need to have happen uh, but this is a game changing opportunity uh, that the federal delegation has brought forth, bringing these high-minded dollars. $1.9 trillion for the recovery of America has been allocated, and we're doing so. And so, but we definitely will protect the individuals out here with good information, but people have to be a great advocate of themselves as well. Okay, I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna start a sentence, and I want you to finish it. Absolutely. Okay. Mayor Sheldon Neely would like to see a large priority of that money go towards 
public safety, blight elimination, health disparities. Also, we want to make sure that we have a, a infrastructure that supports education in our community uh, and also our, our, our overall infrastructure that can support business growth in our community. And, you know, looking at, we're springtime now, um, and we know a lot of times, as we see around the country, just, again, history often repeats itself, and we know when we see warmer weather, we usually see an increase in crime as well as we're seeing right now, an increase in COVID cases. Just heading into these next few months, how does the city plan to be vigilant in making sure that we don't see a, you know, dramatic increase in crime like we're seeing now with the spike in COVID cases? Yeah, prayer, planning, and partnership. We, we've been doing a, a consistent prayer. We've been doing a lot of planning, but the partnership now has to grow with the residents themselves. Uh, the, the things that we see in our community is it's not outside of our community, it's from within, right? We see a national uptick in crime, but it's our neighbors, our friends, our family sometimes committing these, these crimes. We see blight, and we want blight control, but it's our neighbors sometimes, our friends, and our family that's putting the blight down. We have plans on making sure that we do our criminal suppression type of activities, also our blight reduction by cleaning up. But we need everybody on board, and this is where the partnership comes into play. And so we want to continue our partnership and our partnership growth of those of light thinking, of positive thinking, uh, and we will continue to grow as a community something better and brighter than we've ever seen before. And I know last summer there was a curfew um, that you know coincided not only with the COVID cases, but also the crime as it related to those pop-up parties. Is that something that you're currently entertaining? Could we see another curfew here in Flint this summer? No, what we can see is more elevated type of activities and what's gonna be enhanced is the public's uh, uh, components of it. We have a community crime watch and this is the new pallets is going out with all the contact information on the back of it so people can call and report crime. We can see that traffic speeding mechanisms are going to be employed in communities where we see people not obeying traffic uh, speed limits, but we can also see a heavy area of partnership in law enforcement where we're going to be impounding vehicles and taking these vehicles off the street. Uh, we can see those type of aggressive movements, and so also with our gun, uh, you know, capturing and destroying these weapons and not auctioning them back into the circulation, uh, we can see these things. We're going to get these dangerous weapons off the street. We can look for our partners on a state level to give more enhanced uh, laws to be able to help us enforce uh, things moving forward. But we will move unapologetically in a positive direction, uh, and we need people of like thinking to help us. And so what we need, the city of Flint and the residents that says that we need the lead lines replaced in our community, we need the appropriation portions of our city council to move forward in a positive way and not have such uh, a level of strife that we've seen and, and come accustomed to seeing every day. So places like the McKenzie Croom Testing Lab and other pieces and uh, these young people that's being educated, we can continue to move in that positive direction. Mm -hmm. And as we move into this next quarter of the year, because you know the, the year is, is done in, in quarters, as we move to the next quarter of the year, just kind of what are some big focal points for you? What are some things on your agenda that you would like to see accomplished? Well, I want to make sure that this, the strengthening of our educational system for our young people is very strong. Uh, our law enforcement, our blight reduction, and also to be able to, to capture on our positives in this community. We, we are the intellectual capital of the state of Michigan. We have University of Michigan Flint. We have Kettering University. We have Mott College. We have, you know, the ReConnect program that Governor Whitmer has engaged in. We have the Promise Zone. There's no excuse for people not to be able to have advanced education or a skill set or a trade moving forward building a better and stronger economy, cleaning our community up, and then having economic development tools and dollars. Uh, uh, homeowner Rehab is a program we just initiated, and we're going to continue to put money in there so homeowners can get dollars to rebuild and, and, and remodel their homes. We want to do these things, but we have to d definitely take a look at what's between the left ear and the right ear, and that's our brains and how we need to move forward. And we have to be able to strive moving forward, working together. And what else is going on in that brain? Uh, what would you like to leave us with? Something, um, as, we, as we finish off the show, what would you like for people at home who are watching us to know about you, your administration? Because um, you're oftentimes under a lot of scrutiny. So what would you like for those watching to know? Well, we have an insurrectional mindset because the previous administration after I came in still has not conceded this election, still is continuously interfering in other elements and people are on that divide. And so what we need to do is have a level of information and transparency to move us forward. We cannot move forward as a divided community. 
We won the election, we're here, we're working very hard. My life's work is a testament to that. The McKenzie Croom Testing Lab, the Flint Development Center, uh, the library that we have here and the work that we're doing down the poverty corridor and, and going through Flint is a testament to that. And wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if we all work together and seen these things develop for our children? And so I extend the olive branch to all those that may be of divided uh, thinking uh, that we will continue to work uh, for a united community. Uh, we are much more than a victim. We are victors in this community. And I'm going to extend another olive branch for those who are watching. You can send us all of your questions, all of your comments, your concerns to ask at MidMichiganNow.com and we will bring them to the mayor and uh, we'll have a discussion about it because that's what this is all about, being transparent and having that open dialogue, right? Absolutely, and we're not afraid of those questions that will come, but we know that some may have a, a tenant motive or agenda, but we're not even afraid of those questions. But definitely we want to make sure we bring our community together because if we truly knew who benefited from us being divided, we understand our true enemy. And remember, don't let the, those that will uh, try to monetize our suffering pick the pockets of the poor. Are we our brother's keeper? I say yes. We need to move forward together. Well, thank you all for watching. Again, that does it for the latest edition of Ask the Mayor.